definition of accounting is that, um, I'm sorry, of auditing <clears throat> is it's a systematic process of objectively, objectively, right? And that's key. Auditors are expected to be objective, which is why a client can't have their internal auditors sign off on an audit report to give to, to file with the SEC. The auditors are not a part of the management team, right? They're coming in as an objective third party, an independent third party, which we'll talk about the importance of independence when we cover the professional standards, right? Because they're, they're not involved in the, the processing of the financial statements. They're not involved in the pre preparation of the financial statements. So objectively obtaining and evaluating evidence Okay, regarding assertions or representations, assertions about that management makes. Management makes these assertions about the economic actions and events that the company engaged in. Right. So those assertions are what we see in the financial statements. The result, uh, they're making assertions about information that's contained in the financial statements including footnotes. Remember, your footnotes are a part of your financial statements, right? right? And so auditors, are, so which is why we're auditing the financial statements about economic events to determine whether or not they agree that the, the assertions that management makes agrees with, right, the, what's recorded in the financial statements. The assertions and the established criteria which in this case is GAAP, right? Because we're the US, generally accepted accounting principles. If it was an international company uh, doing business in another country, they might, be, they might uh, report under IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. Here in the US, we're still using GAAP, right? So those established criteria and then communicating that, the results to interested users, right? So the auditors report which is the, what is the output of the audit process. That one page report that basically determines or tells the public or users that, who they're commu communicating to, the company, they're giving the company a clean opinion with respect if they, if they issue an unqualified opinion. And those interested users are obviously people who rely on the financial statements or financial reports such as creditors, investors, uh, SEC, PCOB, right? uh, I'm sorry, not PCOB, the SEC, uh, you know, uh, other regulatory bodies, uh, if, you're, you know, if you're in the financial services um, area, you have uh, regulate regulations and regulatory bodies that you have to comply with or report to, okay? So it's a systematic process. Right? Um, the key thing, the, one of the key characteristics of the audit process, of auditors is that they are independent. Right? Auditors have to be independent. Why? What does that mean, to be independent? Yes. What's your name? Elaine. Right, so you, you said a lot of things that they don't work for the company, right? They're independent of the clients and basically they don't have any relationship with the client. Um, they have no incentives, right, to uh, report in the client's favor or report incorrectly. So how, why is it then that we had Enron and WorldCom and a whole host of auditing failures? The auditors, you said fraudulent activities yeah. on the part of the company, and what was your last part? The auditors, they could have been, you know, given a certain type of incentive to... Right, so the auditors might have had incentives. What might, what do you think those, what incentives do you think auditors might have? Do you think the client is paying them off? Hmm? So you think they're getting kickbacks from the client, or a payoff? 
Okay, investments, well, they're not supposed to. So when we talk about independence, you can't invest in your client, so you can't own shares in your client. So I heard a lot of yeah when they said, oh yeah, they're paying them off. Okay, how? How do you think they might have been paying them off? In what way? You think they were actually giving them money? Giving them free vacations? But none of that came out, right? None of that was the case with Enron. It, yes? And the client won. So they gave in to the client, essentially, right? So th realistically, a lot of the audit failures, um, or good, well, it's certainly with Enron and WorldCom, is not because the client was giving the auditor, the audit partner, money on the side, or you know, giving them monetary, in the sense of monetary gifts, right, or something. Like they were, it's not like they were uh, paying the auditors off to, to turn the cheat, the, the cheat, you know, turn away from the issue. It's a little bit of, of, of what uh, Victoria said, right? Was the auditors just kind of gave up, right? The, the, the client argued with them and said, this is why it's right. And the auditors no longer challenged the client. They allowed the client to report that way, even though they had doubts about it. And that's the, and we'll talk about this a lot more when we talk about independence, that's the difficulty. So you're not, when, you, when there are audit failures, it's not necessarily because the auditor made a conscious decision to do the wrong thing, right? It's this unconscious bias that they have. Right, and we'll talk about that. That's a good point, right? Did you, uh, some things you miss just because you don't test 100%, right? And then we'll talk about that's the importance of, of assess risk assessment and assessing risk as accurately as possible because you don't test 100%, right? So you're going to miss things. So that's not a matter of being uh, of independence, right? It's not that you're violating independence. You made a call about um, your, uh, you know, how many items to select and, and what, you know, and, and then what, what percentage um, you were going to look at. So you, you missed something. That's just, that's called sampling risk, right? You just, uh, you, you know, your sample didn't catch everything. But the things that cause auditors, some of the things that are argued that, that cause auditor to violate their independence is you'll find that there are probably more violations of independence in, you know, where auditors, not because they owe, you know, own stock in their company, not because a spouse works for the client, right? It's not that. It's those judgment issues. It's those incentives that they don't even realize a lot of times that is causing them to bias their decisions, right? So, for example, the way the audit process or the way the audit is set up here in the United States is your client hires you. You're not appointed by a regulatory body. The client hires you. Now, Sarbanes Oxley tried to address that and try to distance the relationship between management and the auditor to, you know, improve independence, right, by having the audit committee now hire the auditors. Right? Because the audit committee is supposed to be there on behalf of the shareholders right, of the company. So they're supposed to protect shareholder interests. They're charged with that. So the Sarbanes-Oxley SEC says, well, let the audit committee hire. Take management out of the hiring process. Because if you take management out of the hiring process, what they're essentially saying is management can hold that as a stick over the, a, a, you know, a carrot over the auditor's head. Right? So the auditor doesn't, so the auditor has this third party independent of management that they now report to. And so if they're having problems, if management is not, you know, if management is, you know, 
always challenging the auditors or trying to get them to you know, uh, report more aggressively. The auditors can go to the audit committee and say, look, these are the issues that we found. These are the problems that we see on the audit. And so again, that was a way of trying to ensure that, uh, or try to increase audit independence. And, and by doing that, increasing audit quality. So, one, so independence is a huge, huge, huge building block in, uh, uh, you know, in the audit process. So we're going to talk about independence a lot more uh, next week. But I wanted to just introduce that. And is this what we call independence in fact versus independence in appearance? Right? And the standards only cover independence in appearance. And what independence in appearance means is that and what we have is Rule 101. Rule 101 is, is the, the um, standard that deals with independence. And basically, Rule 101 covers things like can't own stock in your client. Right? You, your spouse can't own stock in the client. Your spouse can't be in a significant financial reporting role at the client. So in other words, your spouse can't be the CFO and you also audit that company, right? Because let's, you know, realistically, how would that work? You're going to challenge your spouse and then go home, <laughs> right? You know, it might not work out for you. What if you found um, a significant error or misstatement in the financial statements that your spouse is responsible for preparing? and it could cause them to lose their job. What are you going to do? You lose your job, you lose income, you lose a nice lifestyle, right? So you don't, you can't even be put in that position. Standard said, mm, nope, can't do it, right? So that's independent. We'll cover all of the different rules from under 101 next week. But basically, those are the things you can look at and see, right? Those are, you can determine if an auditor had, a firm can check to determine whether or not somebody has stock in a company, right? They can, if you have stock, they can say, nope, can't go, you can't audit that client. If their spouse works it, those are things that you could test. Those, it's, it's visible, you know, you can see, right? Independence, in fact, basically, you can't monitor, right? Because independence, in fact, is here. Only the auditor knows if they're truly independent. Only the auditor knows if their decision that they made was based on, was unbiased. That they based that decision on the pure facts. Right. So in the example with Enron, where, you know, Enron made a decision, an incorrect decision, on how to account for something. The auditors didn't agree with it, they argued back and forth, but they allowed themselves to be convinced by Enron that it was okay. Were they truly independent? In fact, was it just that they're not good negotiators? Um, they're not, you know, they, they don't know how to uh, challenge the client? That they're just not great auditors? Is that what it is? Or is it because there were so many, so, they were collecting so much in terms of fees, audit fees, consulting fees, and they felt pressure to maintain that client? And because they felt that way, they, you know, kind of like, oh, well, you know, may, they convinced themselves, they rationalized that it, it was okay. They saw a path to allow Enron to do, to account for those transactions the way that they did. I don't know. That's, now the regulators came in after the fact and said, look, you have, look, these, this is the, these are the facts millions and millions and millions of dollars in audit fees and consulting fees. Hundreds or significant amount of Anderson personnel now work for uh, Enron. You know, they, so they can come in after the fact in hindsight, right, and say that there were all of these contributing factors and because these things existed, the auditors did not challenge Enron. They allowed them to account for these transactions incorrectly. But that's hindsight, right? You don't know that. The auditor didn't say, oh, yeah, that's why I did it, right? So that's the, prop that's, that's the challenge with independence in fact. Only the auditor knows 
what circumstances impacted their decision. Right? So you can't regulate independence in fact. Right? The, the standards could, um, the PCOB, SEC, uh, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley, can try to minimize uh, situations or circumstances that would cause the auditor to violate independence in fact, such as having the audit committee hire the auditors. But they can't regulate it 100%. Okay? So we'll talk more about this.